just realized this paddle is not a prefab, which is bad because I was about to delete it. So make sure to stick it into the prefabs. There it is. And then we're going to delete the paddle from the game. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty object, which is just going to be, um, it's going to be the level setup uh, manager. I, I don't know. I, I like saying manager for things that are these sort of empty objects that are responsible for doing something uh, of some kind. Uh, this is definitely going to be a prefab because we're going to have, this is going to exist on every level that we have. Uh, it's just going to be a requirement. There is the possibility um, that we, we instantiate it somewhere else like as part of the start game button is where this creates and this will have the don't kill me bro between loads. Um, you, you go either way. Um, one way you have to make sure you have it in every single level that you make has this level setup manager. And the other way is you have to make sure that it's persisting properly and that you don't miss instantiating it somewhere in the process. Uh, theoretically, this level setup manager may do more for the level then just make sure the paddle exists. So I think having the expectation that it's got to exist on every single level is not the end of the world. It's sort of that's just sort of its job is to set that stuff up. Uh, so it's going to need a script, and the script is going to be pretty simple. I think this is just going to be the level setup manager, and we need to make sure that we actually create it there. So the level setup manager has got to do a few things, but the most important thing it has to do is instantiate public game object paddle uh, I usually like to do camel case as opposed to Pascal case for this um, paddle prefab and we're going to want to instantiate that instantiate paddle prefab and it's going to have to be in some position so we'll figure that out in a moment. Uh, we're going to want to probably cache that. So let's, just in case, we're going to cache the paddle. Game object, paddle, and that's what's going to be returned from here. Uh, we will have to cast it to a game object, because by default, instantiate only returns, if we got to spell it right, uh, only returns an object, not a game object. And we're going to give it some sort of coordinates. Um, new vector 3. We don't know what it is yet. Let's just give it a zero, zero, zero for now. And quaternion dot identity, we're just gonna give it the, it's basic rotation, whatever it comes with. We don't actually have to rotate it to set it up. So we've set up a paddle there, that's great. And the paddle is still responsible for setting itself up and creating that first ball. So that that's going to be okay. Um, the positioning is definitely going to be off. Let's double check, let's, um, yeah, we're going to want it to be down here somewhere, which is where exactly? Actually, that's an interesting point. We'll, we'll have the paddle up here, wherever the level setup manager is. So it is right there. We're going to line it up to where the paddle should be. You know, we'll just use minus nine. But on some levels, conceivably, you might have the paddle spawning in a weird location. You might have it spawn at the top, and the player's playing this game sort of backwards, upside down. Um, in which case, all you have to do is put the level manager somewhere else. I, I like that. So instead of just instantiating it to the zero point, we're just going to use the level manager's own transform that position. There, that, that sounds cute. In fact, let's also use our rotation. Because we might do some sort of really funky thing, right? And all we'd have to do is rotate the level manager around and then it'll, it'll use all that. Okay, that is fine. So right now we're blindly just instantiating the paddle, um, which is gonna be okay for our test. Let's, let's see if that's still kind of semi-working. Whoops, not quite. Oh, we have forgotten in our level manager right here, we have to point it to the paddle prefab, which is that. Let's try again. There we are. Yeah, we have a functional game again. Oops. Except our paddle is expecting some things, isn't it? We're throwing errors.
paddle paddle script find paddle of finding it by name interesting what the name does the paddle get in the middle of the game paddle clone hmm that is a very interesting because we'd set up everything with the assumption that there's going to be a paddle named paddle in the game. Now we can forcibly change the name of this when we spawn it, I believe. Right? So we can force paddle.name to be equal to paddle because that's what all our scripts, which are hard coded, was expecting. We could also change the script to instead look for an object tagged as player. I think this will work though. Yeah, it's just called paddle. There we go. So now there's no more complaint. Ah! Oh, well, dying works. And game over, too. Not bad. All right. Okay. Uh, that's working pretty well. Now, unfortunately, uh, we still have one issue in that it'll be creating a paddle twice. Because you can imagine, once we go over to level two, yes, we want to save this, and we drop a new level setup manager in here and we'll drop it at that uh, we'll, we'll go minus nine again that seems like a fine place for it to be it's going to cr try to create a new paddle as soon as we load this level because that's what it's doing so we're actually going to want to check to see if a paddle exists first so uh, let's go and grab that brick script this thing here um, game object find paddle yeah that's what we want So we're going to try to set paddle equal to this. If not paddle, right? If we didn't actually find the paddle, in which case instantiate a new one. There. And now our future levels are future proofed. Again, this script is so basic that this possibly isn't necessarily the best way of doing it, but I'm not sure. This, it certainly works. Um, and there are a lot of advantages of instantiating things on the fly. With Unity, it's 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 kind of a mixed bag. Hand placing things is nice in a way because it lets you customize things, but instantiating things on the fly lets you do other things slightly differently. Uh, in this case, I think that uh, creating level the player that way is fine. We do have to make sure there's a level setup manager on each level, but we'll know pretty quickly if there isn't. Um, well, at some point in our, in our debugging, we have to go through the level select screen, level select each individual level, and make sure that it actually loads properly. But we kind of have to do that anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Um, we also actually have the issue that you can see here there's no lives XXX, whereas on level one it's there. And that's the reason, the, the reason for that is the paddle was also responsible for setting up the... Um, the persistence of this live XXX thing. And frankly, I believe that what we really want is to do this with a GUI, uh, which is it handled by the player? Yeah, on GUI is responsible for putting up the score. Frankly, I want it to also do this for the, uh, the lives. Much, much, much better way of doing it. Uh, we don't need a GUI text lives. Uh, we don't need to do that. We don't need to set it up here or there. Should probably uh, GUI lives. Okay, good. That's everything. So we want number of lives there. And are these really a hundred tall? They don't need to be. 30 and that's so set it to 40 let's see is that is that it it's gonna be in a different corner oh our lot our old lives object is still there too we need to get rid of that since it's no longer necessary and now the paddle is responsible for doing that and if we lose a life boom good excellent it's not pretty but that's that's for another video I guess the next thing we should really be doing is dealing with the, the sort of hard coding of the levels. Um, that's, it's really, it's really not great. Let's check our brick script. Um, so 
loading the next level is really easy to do this properly. We can do something like instead of loading level two, we can just see application because our levels are going to be in order. So we can go uh, loaded level plus one. Right, that's all we need to do to load the next level. The problem is mapping that to this. Can we get, you know, I'm sure we can actually. Application dot levels. Can we get a list of the levels from here? Oh, actually, I have a better idea. So this is going to work fine. Instead of unlocking the level from here, we're going to use our new level manager to do that. So. Uh, the brick is still responsible for advancing the game. That is going to be fine. But our level setup manager in the start, because at this point, of course, we know what the current level is, this is going to be responsible for unlocking that. So unlocked, and change this to plus uh, application dot level. So loaded level name. All right, so this will correctly note when we've unlocked a level. It'll just create a string, or a key rather, called unlocked followed by the loaded level name and set it to one. Now our loaded level names, if we flip back over to Unity, so it's gonna be unlocked level one, all lowercase, and let's check to see in our load level GUI script, it's, uh, yeah, we were using a capital there. So we're actually gonna to wanna to do something like this. And this is going to 